Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for this very great opportunity to present our latest work related with uh, uh, the dynamic simulator. So we have been uh, working on this concept of uh, how to use the DIM 250 as a tool to integrate uh, different kind of uh, active chassis control systems. So let me start with a very short introduction about uh, IDIADA. IDIADA is uh, an engineering partner which provides different kind of services worldwide to the automotive industry. We are at the moment uh, 2,700 people and we are distributed in many locations in the world. Even though our main headquarter is still in uh, Spain, in Barcelona, where we have uh, very popular and very famous facilities which are dedicated to the development of different areas of uh, performance of the vehicle and different systems and of course uh, mm, very much to full vehicle uh, development. So within our facilities we have a number of uh, different uh, teams who are dedicated to chassis specifically for brake, ADAS, vehicle dynamics and design of chassis and we already have uh, a number of uh, laboratories which are used to support the development of, the, of these chassis systems. And since um, this year, we are uh, quite happy to say that we are, were able to install, with the collaboration of Viagrade, a new driving simulator lab, which features uh, what you see here in the picture, which is uh, a DIM 250 simulator. And of course, we also have a, a compact simulator, uh, which is not here represented, but which is also used to support our development activities. So let me start with uh, the case study that I'm going to introduce today. OK, because uh, among the many applications that can of a driving simulator, this presentation focuses on one specific aspect which we think can be potentially one of the most uh, relevant for the driving simulator, which is uh, how to develop active systems and specifically how to integrate them in a smooth uh, in a smooth way so because nowadays in the different domains that we can imagine for vehicle dynamics we have many different systems which are working together in order to control the stability of the vehicle and to regulate the performance of the of the vehicle in terms of uh, uh, dynamics so these different systems, they must coexist in what we call in a harmonious way. So we can either think of each individual system working in a way which does not interfere in a negative way with the other systems, or we can think of a more integrated uh, uh, solution in which we have a, a common controller which defines and arbitrates the intervention of the different systems. In either of the two cases, we have to uh, somehow be able to make sure that the systems are working fine together. And uh, in order to do that, we have to take into account that on the one side, we have um, a V diagram for the development of each and every uh, active system that we have in the vehicle. And uh, at the same time, we have to, um, to put all these systems all together. So the only way to put the systems together is to be able to evaluate their behavior at complete vehicle level. But at the same time, in order to be able to define in an appropriate way the way the systems work, we need to, to plan the integration at the very early stages of the development. And so this brings to a contradiction because on the one hand we need full vehicle development and on the other hand we need to start uh, from the early stages to plan the inter interaction between them. So of course the solution is to move all these activities into the simulation environment and to some extent to define kind of a shortcut to the V-diagram where we before starting having a, a functional model and more detailed uh, development of the system we start already having a feedback from the simulation environment where we use models and uh, uh, maybe rapid prototyping, uh, if we have some sort of mule car or demo car, to evaluate uh, how the systems work. However, there is a third requirement, which is very often uh, an important one when dealing with this kind of systems, is that, and as in general for vehicle dynamics, is that the system has to be evaluated in very complex scenarios, 
and uh, in many occasions we need a real test driver to provide a feedback about the functioning. And the reason is that um, offline simulations, they can only excite the system behavior in a kind of a predefined number of scenarios. And on the other hand, uh, the metrics that we can evaluate sometimes are, are a little bit not enough in order to evaluate and to have a complete evaluation of the performance. So the solution appears to be like logical, so we need to connect these uh, models to a driving uh, to a driving person, to a human, through the driving simulator. So this is a little bit our uh, long-term objective, so to make the DIM, among other things of course, also a tool to connect and to uh, evaluate, establish a correct functioning of many different active systems. And in this presentation we started with some sort of a, an internal project based on uh, a combination of uh, torque vectoring system with uh, an ESC. So in order to be able to study the systems in the early stages, we needed to have some sort of uh, initial logic for the ESC system. And, uh, and for this we have kind of uh, elaborated uh, a number of uh, uh, models, which uh, are active system generic models, that we use whenever we don't have the possibility to integrate the actual complex model coming from, from the supplier. So these systems are dev uh, simplified uh, uh, logic where we uh, of the most relevant active uh, controllers. They are developed in MATLAB Simulink and they can be uh, validated uh, so they can be tuned in order to mimic as close as possible uh, the real behavior of the system against uh, uh, measurement data. So the objective, as already introduced, is to support the integration of different systems in the early stages when complex models sometimes are not available, they are too complex to be integrated, etc. And uh, uh, we have started the integration and realized for some of them already integration in the driving simulator in order to enhance the driving experience realism, uh, which uh, sometimes uh, requires to have these systems working at uh, some level. So the systems are normally composed by a basic logic and a basic modeling of the actuators. And uh, through uh, comparison of uh, the simulation data and the, some measurement data, we can uh, elaborate, or let's say, we can um, uh, tune the parameters of these models so that they can mimic as close as possible the behavior of the, of the real vehicle. So here is uh, some example of uh, results for ABS low mu braking, in which we have uh, measurement results on the top of the slide and simulation results in the bottom of the slide. So we can see that, of course, the aim is not to be 100% accurate in, the reprodu in, in reproducing the behavior, but to have something which has enough level of uh, representativity. And similar to for some other scenarios like ABS mu split braking, on the left side we have uh, the speed of the wheel versus time, and on the right side we have uh, the brake actuation on the front left wheel, as, a, as an example. Okay, so this is the basics, uh, the basic uh, ESC uh, system that we have been using for this, for this uh, case study. And uh, the objective was not really to develop the ESC, but was more to develop a torque vectoring logic and to understand its interaction with the ESC. So the tow vectoring logic is something that, on we, in, that has been developed uh, in Idiada in, uh, in the last years. We started in 2011 with a, an internal project to gain uh, more know-how on this kind of systems. And we started developing a logic that we called the iTorque. iTorque is based on uh, two separate, uh, well, let's say two uh, parts. One is a, an all-wheel drive strategy which defines a split of the torque between the front and the rear axle of a vehicle and the torque vectoring system which defines the split of torque between the left and the right wheel. So the logic natively was supposed to be used for uh, electric vehicles with four independent motors. In 2012 uh, we also built a demonstrator. It's, it was, uh, the, the, don the initial vehicle was an urban cruiser, so a vehicle which was natively four-wheel drive but absolutely not an EV. At that time there were not so many EVs available in the market, so we actually 
made all the work to adapt the original vehicle to an EV uh, configuration with four independent motors and a, a pack of batteries. Of course, this uh, proved to be quite a complex task and actually uh, based on this experience and of course also based on the fact that this vehicle after some years uh, was not uh, available anymore because of many reasons, because the prototypes need to be maintained, uh, they are very costly, uh, these kind of prototypes also had issues with the batteries, you can imagine. So in 2017 we, did, we wanted to make a further step of the, of the logic and we um, started to do benchmarking activities on different uh, uh, EV vehicles which are in the market nowadays. So we improved the all-wheel drive logic and in 2019 we updated the iTorque logic as well for the torque vectoring part. So the, the main difference is that in this case uh, uh, we didn't want to build again a, pro a demonstrator vehicle based on some existing uh, internal combustion engine vehicle but we wanted to use uh, uh, the driving simulator. So just a few words on the logic, uh, which is basically structured in two main modules, as I said, a front uh, to rear wheel drive distribution and a lateral torque distribution. The longitudinal torque distribution is supported by three individual blocks, uh, sub-systems. Uh, One is uh, an optimal torque distribution, which distributes the torque kind of in, a, in an ideal way between the front and the rear axle, based on the available power for each motor and uh, other parameters. Then we have a torque traction module, which modifies the outcome of the previous blocks based on the available grip. And then we have a handling control module, or which basically redistributes the torque based uh, on the driver request and the available uh, grip. The lateral torque distribution gen uh, is based on a, a your rate uh, reference generator, which defines the, uh, the your rate reference on a, based on a bicycle model. We have a saturation block which basically uh, limits the, the your rate uh, reference based on the available mu uh, between the tire and the road. And then we have uh, a your rate controller which is a PA, PID which generates a your moment which is required. So the your moment required is then uh, used in the torque distribution block which defines the split of torque between the inner and outer wheels to have that uh, YOM corrective moment. So as I said, and our intention is to make all the development of this logic based on the driving simulator. And for this we have used mostly uh, the DIM, a lot of course also the, the compact simulator. Um, here uh, are the characteristics of our DIM, which are I guess quite well known, but we have a, uh, a tripod uh, which can provide one plus minus 1.25 meter approximately of, of motion. On top of that we have an hexapod uh, which provides all the uh, high frequency motion and as well the roll and pitch. Uh, thanks to the tripod we can have a very large yo motion okay, already in the base platform additionally to the high frequency yo motion of the hexapod and we have high frequency response and very high level of peak accelerations. In our case, uh, the screen radius being at 250 is a little bit bigger than in the 150. It is around 4.5 meters. So we needed to connect uh, all the different systems in, uh, in one simulation environment. And for this strategy that we followed is to have um, uh, the DIM on the one side uh, that we use to get the driver demands to the vehicle model on which, which runs on, uh, on a concurrent platform. And uh, uh, we have on a different computer, in this case we have used the broadcast computer, we have, uh, we have the active uh, system models running uh, as in, in the Simulink uh, environment. And the communication is done uh, through the uh, UDP blocks available in, uh, in, um, in, the Simulink, uh, in the Simulink model so that we can exchange information and also act on the model in a very efficient, uh, efficient way. So we have conducted a little bit of, a, of an experiment okay, in which uh, the objective was to tune and validate the torque vectoring and the DSC when they are working as independent systems and when they are working uh, cap, uh, coupled, so together. 
So, because the idea is that both the Tor vectoring and the ESC, they um, control somehow the yaw rate, but they do it in a different, uh, with different actuators, so they have different domains of actuation. So initially, initially each system was uh, tested and tuned individually by the test driver on the simulator, and then finally they were tuned uh, simultaneously. So the um, expert driver of Idiada was uh, running, driving the simulator in our uh, Idiada dry handling truck. So of course we have a digital twin of the of, of basically all the tracks of Idiada, and in this case we have used Idiada dry handling. We have uh, let the driver adapt to the simulator uh, and to the scenario and to the model. Then we have made a a step of uh, active systems parameters and modifying the, the main uh, uh, variables that are available. And then finally, we have uh, let the driver stabilize uh, a certain lap timing. We have recorded both objective data uh, from the vehicle and the uh, subjective feeling of the driver about his uh, driving uh, experience. We have uh, compared four vehicle setups uh, one base setup in which we only have acti active the all-wheel drive logic, uh, one vehicle setup with a, with a torque vectoring, one uh, setup where we only have DSC working, and one where we have both of them working together. So I'll go through briefly through the results. So uh, the I have here actually five configurations because the torque vectoring plus ESC required kind of two different setups, an initial one and a final one. And we can see that uh, the base uh, vehicle versus the torque vectoring vehicle, they have quite a different uh, lap timing. Okay, so the, the torque vectoring with the same amount of power and the same setting of the suspension was capable to reduce uh, the lap timing uh, quite uh, considerably. Uh, with the ESC, the, the, the delta is, of course, much lower, uh, as, as expected. And probably the most interesting result is the fact that initially, when we started to use the, the tor vectoring and the ESC as they were tuned and as individual systems, the, um, the behavior of the vehicle was not so well accepted by the driver. And so even also the, the performance overall was not uh, at a very high level. And... Uh, so it was required to have sort of a, an additional tuning of the parameters so that we uh, made a, an individual, uh, let's say, a, a more specific setup when we had both the torque vectoring and the ESC working simultaneously. So, and this was required because, let's say, checking some of the parameters that were assessed uh, subjectively, the level of intrusiveness or the, the actuations of the vehicle were considered to be uh, not at a good level, so too high from the driver, and also he noticed that he had to rec to adapt very much his driving style to the to the actuations of the of the vehicle, and this was not uh, letting me drive uh, uh, at a good level. So uh, just some more uh, result. So looking at the base vehicle versus the torque vectoring, we analyzing the data, we have observed that. Of course, we can reach so higher speeds because the lap timing is, is increased. So we have this shift in the velocity diagram, which is quite clear. And more interesting, we have in many of the corners, especially the, the long corners with, where we have to stabilize the vehicle, we have less understeer and also less uh, steer corrections. We also observe that the yaw rate stabilizes uh, more in, uh, in cornering, especially this is the initial corner to, to the left where we have a little bit more yaw oscillations in the, in the base vehicle. And uh, um, we have in general a stronger application of the throttle at entrance and exit of the corner. Let's say from mid corner towards the exit of the corner, the driver pushes on the throttle in a more uh, in a more uh, decise way. And also in, a, in, in one rapid uh, direction change, uh, the, there was no uh, torque, uh, well, no brake uh, applied with a torque vectoring system, which instead was required to stabilize the vehicle a little bit on the, on the base vehicle. 
So checking the comparison with the ASC, results were kind of similar, even, the, even if the main difference is that the lap time was not so, so good. Also in this case, we have uh, some understeering correcting uh, effect uh, and uh, a little bit of a stabilization in the yaw rate, but less than and not as efficient as with, uh, with the torque vectoring. Also in this case, uh, the throttle is applied a little bit more uh, uh, abruptly because the ESC will correct any, uh, any over, uh, oversteer corner exit. And uh, finally, uh, with the EV, uh, the torque vectoring uh, in combination with the vehicle stability control or the ESC, we uh, again, we have the same, F, uh, same kind of behavior as before, but just emphasized furthermore. So we, we have, uh, this uh, even higher level of stabilization of the yaw rate and, uh, and finally a, a better lap timing. So conclusions are related with uh, the fact that uh, the active models were successfully integrated in the driving simulator in this uh, co-simulation environment. The simulator and the active system models proved to be quite an effective platform to study how the different systems uh, work together and uh, it's quite interesting to, to highlight the fact that the experiment was carried out in a couple of uh, driving days. Okay, of course we had uh, quite a lot of preparation, but the time required for the driver to evaluate and, and to provide his feedback was uh, two days of driving. Instead, uh, uh, the similar experiment in the proving ground, based also on our experience in the, with the with the previous uh, project with the demo vehicle, would have required uh, several days, a prototype, maybe even spare tires. Uh, etc. So the cost uh, and the time of it would have been uh, a completely different scale. And uh, uh, one relevant result more specific uh, for the case study is the fact that the ESC and the toe vectoring, uh, when, we, when they work independently or together, they require quite a significant uh, uh, difference in the parameters uh, for, the, for both the controllers. Okay, thank you for your attention.